grace and peace in Jesus. So, have you been listening to Christmas music lately? Yeah. It's, it's this time of year, it's pretty much the only thing we listen to. <laughs> All the time. Love it. I even found a, um, a playlist on Spotify that has a thousand Christmas songs. 50 hours. And I just put that on shuffle and I'm hearing new songs I never heard of before. And, and uh, a lot, lot of a lot of fun. And, and then uh, the the piano at home, I just have my, my Christmas books out, and my Christmas fake books, and it's just Christmas music all the time. I love it. What are, okay, I want you to raise your hand, and you can shout it out. What are some of your favorite songs to sing at Christmas? Jingle bells? <laughs> all right. Yeah? Okay. Oh, that's an Advent one. Yeah, yeah, that's good. At our house right now, um, let's see, the songs we really like singing are, are they're secular songs. It must have been the mistletoe. You know that one? That's a lot of fun. And, and Nothing for Christmas. If you're not familiar with that song, look it up. Great song. Nothing for Christmas. Especially parents, you'll love it. Nothing for Christmas. But, but what I really like, what I really, you know, um, thoroughly enjoy and take to heart are the carols, the Christmas hymns that point us to Christ and proclaim what this is all about. And, and, you know, just with part of the post-church culture, you don't hear those ones as much anymore out in the store, on the radio. You've got to find them. But, but those, those are the ones that point us to what this is all about. So I've got a question. Speaking of, of Christmas carols, Christmas songs, Christmas hymns, do you know what is the oldest Christmas carol? The oldest Christmas carol. A little bit of a trick question. We know the words, but we don't know the tune. The song the angels sang when Christ was born. The choir of angels, the angel army, the heavenly host above the skies of, of Bethlehem, and they sang out these words. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. That's what they sang. That's the first Christmas hymn carol pointing to what this day, what this event is all about. And, what, and you see in those words, there's two directions that the angels are pointing to. Glory to God, peace on earth. Let's unpack that a little bit. Glory to God in the highest. Why? Because God is doing his plan. God is implementing the thing I mean, God's done lots of stuff in the history of the world up to this point, but this is the big one. This is the undoing of the brokenness of the fall. He's doing it. God living out his gracious, loving character, and so the angels are glorifying him. It's all to God's glory. So that's the glory part. But then there's an earthward direction, and the word the angels use is peace. This is not a, a wish for peace, it is a proclamation of this is what is happening. By this birth and what it means, God in heaven is glorified and peace is coming to earth. And that's our word for today. As we continue our Advent series, he comes bearing gifts. Last week was hope and that incredible biblical Christian hope, which is so different than the world's hope. Today, it's peace. Peace on earth, peace be with you. But what does that mean? What, what is peace? How do we define peace? Now, when we hear the word peace, well, I hear peace just general out in the world. I think of peace of mind, okay, which is a, is a good thing. Um, absence of conflict, whether between people or nations or, or um, peace and quiet. Yeah, that's, that's something we need, right? Now those, are, those are, you know, all things that, that the world can use plenty of. A lot of distress and depression and anxiety and all kinds of issues, COVID and whatever, everything else going on, we can use some peace of mind. Is there a need for absence of conflict? Look around. Look at our world. 
peace and quiet? Yeah, this time of year I can use that too. But when the Bible uses the word peace, it means something deeper, it includes all that, but it's something deeper and richer and bigger than what I just talked about. Its roots are in the Old Testament, the word for peace, it's translated peace in the Hebrew language. You've heard the word shalom. Now, that is a word that there is no one word correspondence in English. There's no one word in English. Peace comes close, but that can, can, can know everything that's tied up in the word shalom. It's so much bigger, deeper, and richer. And so in the New Testament, we're using Greek, irene, that's what they're referring to because they were Hebrew people. Shalom. Now, shalom means wholeness, completeness, oneness in, in relationship. So if all relationship, wholeness, completeness, holistic, I'm shalom with myself, I have good health and I have peace of mind. Shalom with God, I'm walking with God in his will, I'm at peace with God and we are... We are we are one with each other. Shalom with the people around me. We are a community. We are better together. We are peace, forgiveness. Shalom with God's creation and caring for creation and living in harmony with it. Shalom means all. These are things that we want, right? This is, this is what we the good life. Shalom. Health of mind, body, spirit, relationship with God, relationship with people, relationship with, with, with the earth. Shalom, then, is everything that got destroyed in the fall. Genesis 3, the garden. That's what got wrecked. Shalom. Relationship with God. Relationship among people. And then relationship with creation. What do I mean by, by, by the creation? Creation fighting against us. Disasters and disease. We fighting against creation by misusing it and hurting it. There's a need for shalom. So when the angels show up and begin this worship service for the shepherds, singing this song, and they're singing peace on earth, they're singing shalom, they are proclaiming this is what God is doing. He's fixing the fall. This is what this is about. By the birth of this child, he's coming to bring shalom, oneness, wholeness with God, with one another, with all creation. Peace. So see, it's big. And they're singing peace. It's big. And this is the gift we're talking about this week. God's gift to you, to me. Peace. Shalom. Peace on earth. Okay, so it's tied up in this baby who's born. That's where it comes from. That's why Jesus is called by prophecy, you know, Isaiah chapter 9, 700 years before Christ, Prince of Peace. Well, what's it mean? Why is this? How did he, how did he do this? How does he bring shalom? Well, first, by living a life of perfect peace, a life of perfect shalom. We know Jesus, the Bible says, was sinless. He lived in perfect harmony with the Father, doing his will and his body and his, and his life embodied the Father's character. That's living in shalom with the Father perfectly. He lived in shalom with creation Restoring creation to God's will, calming the sea, multiplying loaves to feed hungry people, curing disease, even death. Now, shalom among people, that's a little harder because it takes two, right? Or more. But he lived for his part, giving shalom, speaking shalom, even to the point of on the cross, tortured and being killed, he forgives those torturing and killing him. 
So, so that's part of what he did. He lived the perfect life of shalom that we cannot live, that we fall short of, that we, we, that, that we long to live, but we don't do. He did it for us. But that's not all. And the meaning of the cross where it culminates is that he takes all of the unshalomness, all the brokenness, all the sin, all the guilt, all the condemnation, all the fallenness on himself, absorbs it into himself and lets it kill him and put him in a grave. And then he rises again as the first part of, we've, heard, we've we talked about this often, the new creation. What's the new creation? It is the creation in perfect shalom. That's what it is. God, one another, in all creation. Jesus is the shalom. So, by his life, his death, his resurrection, he is bringing this shalom. Some of this shalom we're not going to experience until the resurrection. But we're going to focus now, right now, on what is at the heart of it, which makes this happen, and that is restoring shalom with the Father, peace with God, peace with God by his death and resurrection, forgiveness, righteousness, redemption, justification. We've used that word as well. Look at Paul says in Romans chapter 1, five, Romans 5, verse 1. He says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul, being a good Hebrew, he's thinking shalom. Because of what Jesus has done, that baby unto us, a child is born, Prince of Peace, because of what he did. We have shalom with the Father. Do you know what this means? Do you know this peace? It means you don't have to prove yourself to God. He's proven himself to you on the cross. You don't have to, you don't need to, to earn anything from God. He has earned everything for you by his life, death, and resurrection. You don't need to be afraid of judgment and condemnation from God because he's taken all of that on himself and given inst you instead his perfect shalom righteousness. You don't have to worry about being good enough for God, being worthy enough for him to hear your prayers, worthy enough for him to help you in times of trouble. No. That's why he came. That's why Christmas. That's why the child was born. To achieve all this and to give it to you. By grace, gift, through faith, trusting in him, it is yours. Now what's the catch? There's no catch. <laughs> I mean, we know we live by, if it sounds too good to be true, it can't be true. Here's the exception. It's true. No catch. Free. Grace. Forgiveness. Peace. We trust in Jesus. We are at peace with God. Shalom. And this is where my peace of mind is grounded. Remember, we started off talking about that, like peace of mind, a lot of the tension. This is where it's grounded in this reality. I mean, there's, there's techniques we can do to calm ourselves, but it only goes so far. This is reality. The God of the universe has sent his son to die and rise for me that I may be at peace with him. That's the foundation of my peace of mind, which carries me through all challenges. Jesus said to his disciples, John, um, John 16, 33. We have, we have used this verse a lot <laughs> during COVID, but it's so good, it's so true, it's so powerful. I have told you these things, Jesus is saying. This is right before he goes off to be crucified. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. Take heart, I have overcome the world. What is the foundation of the peace? That he has overcome the world, which is what? The cross, the resurrection. That's the foundation of our peace. Be grounded in Christ, grounded in his cross and resurrection. That's where our peace comes from. And this is also where we are empowered, filled, blessed, led to live shalom in our lives with others. 
Because we are forgiven, we can forgive others. Because we have been given peace with God, we can extend peace and shalom to others. And that's why Jesus said, Sermon on the Mount, let's put it up there, Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God because they're looking just like the Father, making peace, bringing shalom. So this is his gift to you, to me. The gift of peace, the gift of shalom. Because of Jesus. And so in the the hectic, hubbub, activity, cacophony, and chaos of this time of year, and also in the middle of some of the disappointments of the Christmas season, and the grief, and some of the loneliness and the disappointment, in the middle of all of that, may the peace of Christ be with you. May the shalom of God fill your heart in Advent, at Christmas, forever. Peace be with you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are Prince of Peace for you by your life, your death, and your resurrection. You have won peace, shalom, with the Father. And now we live in the certain hope of the day of resurrection, new creation, where we will live forever in the new heavens and the new earth, the place of perfect shalom. Lord, let your spirit lead us and guide us that we may live our lives in this peace, in this shalom, that in all the troubles that we experience, that this is our grounding, this is our foundation. Peace in you. In Jesus' name, amen.